All right, back, we're back here again. Uh, this this is an addition to the clip that I shot on the uh, finger joint, sir, when I put the wormy chestnut together. I don't know why in the world I didn't uh, get a shot of the cutter and the process here on the shaper. Uh, I had some posts there to the, to the video. And uh, you, you guys, you, you're doing great. You got to keep me in line here. I, like I said before, you know, I hadn't, hadn't been shooting videos for very long, so I get tied up in the work that I'm doing and uh, I forget. Uh, and uh, I, I should have just, I should have shown the process here to, to, to finger joint those things and uh, the bit to do it with if, if people's never saw one. But uh, like I said, I, I get sidetracked and I forget about it. So, uh, and, uh, and uh, had some uh, viewers post there that they wanted to see that thing. And uh, that's great. I, I, like I said, I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that you guys keep me straight and let me know what it is you want to see. Uh, I'll do my best to, uh, to get it for you. Uh, so this will just be a little short one. I've got, uh, the fella did call me back and that had it and asked me if I had any wood left. And I told him, yeah, just a little bit. And he, uh, he gave me another a piece that he needed. So I've got two short pieces right here. They're not very big at all, but I need to put them together. Uh, so I, luckily he's called. I was going to dig around and find some scrap wood and get it down to the same thickness and, and do that. But uh, the guy called and said he wanted one more piece. So uh, I'm going to put these two together. Uh, I, let me first say that the, the finger joint bit is it's kind of aggravating to get set up. It's got to be precise. If you're off just a little bit, then you're off with your joint. You you'll have one piece above the other one, and then below it on the other side. You know, but if you don't have your bit set perfectly, then your then your boards won't line up. And each time you set your bit up, you got to make sure that you've got your stock the same size. If you're going to use a setup block, uh, now I make. Uh, I made a couple different setup blocks. Uh, of course, we all know, you know, sometimes you need to, you might want to put a piece on a piece of plywood. I've, I've had an occasion where I needed to do that. Well, then your stock's got to be the same thickness as your plywood. Most plywood anymore is not true three quarter, you know, it's 21 30 seconds or 23 30 seconds or whatever it happens to measure out to be. But, uh, so you, you've, got to, uh, you've got to set your bit for your thickness of your stock each time you do it. Uh, and then get it set right so it'll be even when you put it together. But anyway, uh, just wanted to put that in there so if, if somebody's looking at one of these, uh, thinking they could use it, uh, don't don't go out and buy one and, and uh, get frustrated with it right off the bat because I remember the first time I tried to use mine, I, I got, I got uh, a finger joint bit and I thought, yeah, I'm gonna be able to, to joint some end grain, you know, so make some pieces longer. Wow. It took me a while to figure out how to set it up and I got really frustrated with it. I almost got rid of it and, and give up on the idea. But uh, I just throwed it down and come back later when I was having a better day. But I got it figured out and, and then after you do that, uh, it's not so bad. When you, when you, when you realize that, that the setting uh, depends on the thickness of your stock. That's, that's the most important thing is the thickness. When you, you start with all your stocks gotta be the same thickness and then you set your bit for that thickness, then everything will go fine. So I'll spin the camera around here and show you the bit. Uh, what I'm actually doing here is I'm using a router bit. I've got a Fruid, Freud, Fruid, however you want to pronounce it. I've got a Fruid router bit that's, that's my finger joint bit. But I, I got an adapter and I use that router bit on my shaper. Uh, and uh, there's a couple of reasons I do that. that I prefer to use the shaper. It's all cast iron, massive, and it, uh, to me, it just does a better job. But uh, there are several cutters on it, you know, and you, you're cutting across the iron, and you need the power and the torque. Uh, of course, I'm running my my shaper on the highest speed setting, which is 10,000 RPM, which would be the slowest on my fluid router. Uh, I think it goes from 10,000 to 20. So the slowest setting on my router. It's probably where I would run this bit anyway. It's just a pretty good size bit, pretty good size cutter for a router. So it works great on the shaper. I can use my miter gauge, and I've got plenty of I've got plenty of table for my stock to set on, even if it's a longer piece. 
Uh, so just a little bit about that and I'll show you how I got it set up here. See if I can get zoomed in here. Maybe that won't blur. So there's our, there's our fluid router bit. And it's set up here in the shaper. Uh, like I said, uh, I've got an adapter where I can run router bits in my shaper. And sometimes if I've got a pretty good sized bit, I'll do that. Because it works really well. But uh, I've already got it set. The height is set. And I've got the fence set up as a stop. And I'll use the, uh, I'll use the miter gauge. Come in here with our stock like this. And uh, we'll make a pass here and we'll cut it. Now, what, what, how this works when you got your bit set properly? If you've got two boards, if you wanted to use, make sure I'm in there here. I'm, I'm not. Let me get, uh, let me get zoomed back out here. Okay. If you got, if you got two pieces you want to put together. <coughs> excuse me. And there's a front side to each one. If you want to, if you want to use uh, uh, one particular side as the front, what you do is you cut one of them one way, and the, and the other one the other way. In other words, if you wanted if you wanted these two boards here, if you wanted your finished product to this to be the front, you cut one of them this way, one of them this way. So when you put it put it together down there this would be the front for the whole board. So that's how those are laid out. Go ahead and fire this thing up and make these two passes on this wood here and show you how it goes together. Now we've got just a little fuzz. Let me step over here and grab my sandpaper. Just rub it lightly here and get that fuzz off. Make sure we don't have anything holding it apart. Now this is a piece of wood right here is not the best of shape. We may have to do something else here with this. But anyway, this will this will give you an idea. So now there's our there's our furniture joint. And then these pieces will go together just like this right here. You glue it up, clamp that thing together, and then there you've got to see it's a pretty good joint, you know, it'll hold together on its own there. Uh, and like I say, when you get it, when you get it set right, it works good. Of course, it's almost impossible to get it perfect. Uh, you'll have a little variation, and if your wood's got just a little bit of a bow, uh, it, it can make it change here. So you'll almost never be exactly perfect. And uh, what I do is after I get it put together and get it glued up, and get to uh, the glue dry and everything's ready to go. Then I bring it over here to the drum center, and then I'll make the pass. Uh, most of the time on the front side, the back side's not off enough on this. You just barely can feel any difference in it. So, and then you they have that just that barely can feel the difference on the front. And then, but anyway, after the glue dries, you get glued up and you make one pass to the drum center and bring the top of it down perfectly even. And the back's not off enough to have to worry about, so you're really not changing the thickness by very much. Just a few thousands, maybe. So, anyway, uh, that's how the finger joint bit works. And uh, sorry I didn't put that in the first video. I, like I said, I should have. I just, uh, I 
Yes, I went brain dead. <laughs> but anyway, thanks again, guys, for pointing that out. And, and anytime I post anything that uh, that you watch and you want inf more information on it, I'll uh, I'll do my best to get you some more. Uh, I know I've had a couple requests, uh, and uh, I'm working on those. Uh, I've been kind of kind of busy here in the shop as of late. I picked up a few customers and uh, trying to get them going, and uh, so uh, it. Uh, makes it a little tough but I'll, uh, I'll get it all worked out and I'll get those requests done and, and uh, like I said if there's anything else that you want to see or any ideas or anything that I do show here that I leave something out just let me know I'll certainly see if I can't get it back in there anyway thanks for watching